sorry, Chuck, for just one second, just to pick it back on that then. So they, then the assumption becomes, and I think I've heard you say this before, but the assumption becomes a current hardware gets Tesla to level five. Is that how you're thinking about it, James? Or no, do you I think do. level five is a different equation? No, I think the current hardware is adequate. Humans can drive okay. cars. And at, I think the current software is, is inadequate. And it's entire, I think, you know, if I was going to start, if I was going to quibble about elements of the system, the first thing I would quibble about is the, 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 the thing that's most likely to prevent them in the hardware from being able to do it is not having enough compute. I, you know, it's uh, the first time you get something working, it takes more compute than it does when you get it optimized. But because they want to come in, they come to market as quickly as possible, they they want, to, you know, they're going to need more compute than the minimum theoretical that you might need for the thing. Like more compute is going to be better. And having the frame rate be twice as slow or not be able to, like the thing that I was talking about, like maybe it can only, you know, maybe the output from the neural network that's determining the lanes, it can't go more than 300 feet out right now because they just don't have the compute or they don't have enough memory. Like, I think that is like 100 times more likely to be a really important limitation of the system than that you know, the resolution of the current cameras, for instance, just to pick some other random thing to talk about or or the radar or something, you know, it isn't there. I, an interesting observation, you know, they took the radar. I, I don't know what your experience is, Chuck. Maybe you could comment on this. But my sense of the false phantom braking phenomena when you're approaching fixed obstacles like cars at the side of the road, bridges and that kind of stuff, that it it's much lower now than it was like a year ago or it's a, you know, easy to address and, that point and, but, yeah and they and they took the radar out and it got a lot better so you know if more sensors was always better then it shouldn't have gotten better when they took the radar out right okay so on the phantom braking question the the nature of phantom braking has changed uh the issues you were referring to with overpasses and the static objects yeah. definitely has gotten a lot better a lot better but tightening up the vru sensitivity has introduced some new phantom breakings yeah. due to other other reasons so and and the consumers and we are all customers we're not engineers back to the mm -hmm. hubris comment you made on my address a second ago um we don't know right so we're just out here watching what's happening and trying to guess what's going on and i'll be the first one to admit i don't know i'm just talking out loud so everybody can hear what i'm thinking chuck if i thought you, you knew everything me, man come on I'm no 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 if, I, I well in my mind i try to think through why but i don't necessarily know and okay. i don't know what ashok and his team thinks but I, I i just cannot and back to the person that designed the cameras was mobile eye and they're out of 11 cameras so if you were to say the person that designed it is it was happy with it you could argue that that point isn't static anymore so hmm. what and, and the other thing is in in nothing in technology would I ever settle with what I decided then. I'm always going to take advantage of cost advantage, technology advantages, specifically on your commute, compute point. There's so much we could do with compute, but there's also opportunity to improve things. And I would also say Tesla has only had a few inflection points to adjust these things. And the last one was hardware three before FSD ever came out. And any of us drove this. So you could argue that the team was focused on completely different things when that hardware version came out, was designed and installed and committed to. Is there an opportunity of changing cameras along the way? Maybe. And I'm also not an advocate of extra cameras. I'm a better, better perspective for the cameras they have. But I know moving them is a complicated thing too. So that's why maybe a new car is the reason to do it. And maybe this dedicated robo taxi Elon mentioned in April at the Giga opening is that. Maybe it will have the perfect sensor suite for what Ashok and his team feels is required. But I, I just like, I, I'm not gonna settle and say, I believe, hit the I believe button without some thought process around it. And I'm like, well, why wouldn't they have changed it? Well, it's hard, it's expensive. There's a lot of other reasons. Well, when's the next time we can change it? Okay, guys, let's write out this project plan. AP4, you better get it all in that basket because by then our next point is AP5, which may be in 2028, 20, 2030, right. who knows? So those are my points on that. You know, uh, I guess I have hubris. <laughs> well, it, you know, thinking through this stuff is fun. It, and it, uh, it's a super interesting question. Like what's the right set of, you know, it, and it's not like experts don't disagree on this, right? Almost all of the industry has picked a different sensor suite than, yeah. than Tesla, right? So there are lots of smart, hardworking people who've studied the problem really hard, yeah. who believe that you really need a lot more sensors to, to do the job than, 
than Tesla does. On, on I there. do think it can all be done with vision. Elon leaked a little comment about high def and radar is important, or, or nothing but high def would be important. And then there was a weird patent on a high def radar, and we're like, oh, that was interesting. Wonder where they're thinking about using that. Maybe it's a semi. Maybe it's got to do with backing up a trailer mm -hmm. in Cybertruck with trailer mode. I don't know. What what would we need that for? Um, we could we could speculate. And then there was a leak this week with a funky little sensor. I don't know if you saw that uh, on Twitter with a a red car with it had the is definitely a light sensor because it had two eyes. And most infrared or lidar sensors have two eyes on it, and it was basically strapped on the re left repeater. See if you can find that far as that on the left repeater of a, of a red car. And we're all speculating. Yeah. What? Obviously it could be, you know, what am I searching food. for it, Chuck? I'm sorry. What am it I, was that sensor for? that was on the repeater camera uh, yeah. that that came out this week. On, I saw, I saw a close up of that and there weren't like, it had those two holes, but there wasn't a lens and they oh, looked wait. like they were air holes or something. This was I, like well, a I mean, Tesla prototype, Chuck, or? Well, it was, it, it had, it had California yeah. manufactured plates on it and it was yeah. obviously an engineering experiment and, and we're all mm -hmm. speculating what it was for, but it was just funny that it was strapped to the left repeater and all the sensors well, they, I know they, of. There were two photos and one of them was up, I mean, one of them was a left repeater, one was a right. So they had them on both sides of the car. Okay, yeah. Um, and most of the sensors I know that have those little circle holes is for a send receive light type of sensor. I have some infrared sensors I've played with before on Raspberry mm -hmm. Pis and they have those same two eyes. You know, I, it's usually not a radar because radars are usually enclosed and, um, and cameras of course have a lens and you can see the lens. So I don't think it was either mm -hmm. a radar or a lens. I think it was some sort of light sensor. Could have been an ultrasonic of some sort. I don't know. Who knows what they're testing, but it's just fun to look at and go, oh, wonder what that means. Of course, it just leads us down rabbit holes where we start speculating, and it's all mm. what to do about nothing. And I, <laughs> I had this experience, this experience of being like, a, a, which uh, being inside a company working on a product that that yeah. people outside the company were speculating a lot about that I wasn't allowed to talk about, and I would read their speculation on sort of the Yahoo message boards about what was going on. And over the course of like the two years that I was involved in this project. They they went down a rabbit hole and then they just kept going. <laughs> right? And by the, Convincing you know, after, themselves. After 18 Convincing months, got, they were so far off the rail. Like I wasn't allowed to talk to anybody, but they were just like they they had all of these theories about what why we yep. were doing what, what it was that we were doing. And and nothing was remotely close. And I always, you know, I imagine the guys you know, on the AP team, like I, I seriously doubt any of them w have watched the videos I'm on, but I'm imagining like all this stuff I'm getting wrong every time I'm talking about this, that like I'm I'm the guy who's like way down the rabbit hole and they're looking at this like, what is he thinking? Like it's so yeah. much simpler than that. Yeah. I have a similar analogy I use uh, with pilots when we're flying in the flight deck. You know, if you're flying from JFK to San Francisco and you got six hours ahead and you show up and you just meet the guy, you shake his hand or, or woman and say, hey, you know, Let's go fly. And you get in the flight deck and you kind of get through the chit chat. You know, where are you from? And uh, you know, let's talk about that after I finish this story. And then you get to the top of climb. And you start to say, well, what kind of hobbies do you have? And then you start to say, well, and then somebody will say something. Well, what do you think about the company doing this? And then, you know, and then, whoo, there's another comment and another comment. And six hours later, that conversation has gone into this death spiral to where everybody's out to get you and you got your pitchforks ready and uh -huh. you're going to hell as angry as you could possibly be. So there is some, definitely some truth to the, the filter bubble or closed environment conversation mm. where one feeds off the other. And next thing, the brain starts to convince itself of a new reality mm. that sometimes never existed. And, you but know, it's anyway. kind of, <laughs> if you don't take it too seriously, because it, I mean, the reason we get together and have these conversations because it's fun, right? It's not changing yeah. anybody's life. So, so, you know, if there's a, if there's a fun story that we can all get into that we're all going to laugh about, then maybe, maybe that's where the, the upside is anyway. It's not about being right. It's about having a good time. Speaking Speaking about fun stories, so let's look at this little Wally -E sensor on this repeater that you just pulled sure. up. <laughs> That's what Chuck, I'm going to step of. away for 30 seconds, but I'm going to let you leave okay. this here real quick, okay? Yeah, yeah. Can you pull up the, the zoomed in one? There was a zoomed in one right next yeah. to it, or, or skip skip forward once. Yeah, that, that okay. yeah, that one. All right. I don't know. Why would you stress the bundle on the back of that sensor makes me think, okay, that's got like a coax bundle in there or something with some bandwidth. It's not just two little yeah. wires going to a sensor. Yeah. I have no idea what that blue putty is other than maybe hiding up serial numbers or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. But, it's, uh, somebody, somebody mentioned that they thought maybe it's just, maybe it's a mount for something else. Like the actual sensor is gone and there's something that's supposed to plug on top of this. And maybe that's true too. 
I don't know. Uh, it's, you know what I'm cool. I, I have no clue what that is. Neither do I. So we're just speculating about it. But my experience, and I've played with electronics some and bought little parts that, you know, can see things and measure distance and stuff like that. And usually it's a laser rangefinder. So if you ever looked at a laser rangefinder using a golf course, or whatever, mm -hmm. you got a lens on the top and a lens on the bottom and you kind of shoot and it goes doo doo, that sort of two lens, uh, sure. two, two sensor yeah. sort of thing. Infrared sensors kind of have side by side sometimes and, and they, they work off each other that way. Um, and I don't know much about LIDAR, but I, I imagine that LIDAR would need some sort of, you know, no, it's the same thing, but just, you know, it scans, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't think that's LIDAR. I'm not, I don't want anybody to think that's what I'm saying, but I don't know. It's interesting. And maybe it could be some ultrasonic ground truth thing they're playing with, but I don't think that's why they would put it on the repeater if you're hmm. asking me. So uh, who knows? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we, you know, we two all... cameras though, right? Uh, I'm sorry? It's, it's definitely it not two cameras like... though, is it? Yeah. No. Okay. I, well, I, I shouldn't say no. I don't know, but my experience is that two, you know, symmetric lens sort of thing is some sort of light sensor usually. Um, and I think to have a lens, like, you I don't have see a, a lens glass. on it. I mean, yeah. you from the reflections on the car, it looks like if there was glass in those holes, we would see, or you know, yeah. we would see, be able to see it. And it could all be Tesla rumor control going, "Hey, watch this." Yeah. <laughs> 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 We're gonna throw this out, you know. Yeah, you wonder days, which way just to. I don't yeah, think they have the time to, to troll us, but if they did, man, what fun that That's would be. That's a good be. way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, they did man. it for this, uh, for this live stream specifically. Let's see if these guys are going to talk about this crazy thing here. Uh, <laughs> but there, there are um, manufacturer plates on it, so you can at least sort of say, yeah. well, you can't get those, you know, on your own. So, 